We are in part two of section five. Section five is about the SAM implementation for tier one. In part one, we have covered the basics of tier one, meaning what is tier one and what is its expected outcome, how tier one is implemented, how is the gap between tier zero and tier one. And we looked at the processes, change management, core data management, license management, and security management, and also the six key roles and how to form a strong and solid SAM team with some additional roles there, making it a total of seven positions in the SAM team. We also touched briefly on risk assessment, automation and tooling, some of the principles such as keeping it simple and practical, automate, optimize and automate, and the concept of uh, establishing policies clearly, and a very high level look at planning. In part two of section five, we will continue with tier one implementation, but we will focus on the six core processes, namely, SAM asset identification, SAM inventory management, SAM asset record verification, SAM repository management, software license compliance, and SAM conformance verification. And these are the six processes I just mentioned, core processes for tier one. Let's uh, go through them one by one. The first one is SAM asset identification. This process ensures that the, all the required classes of assets are selected, grouped, and defined by appropriate characteristics that enable effective and efficient control of the software and the related assets. Usually traditional assets have been easier to quantify and account for, meaning not the software and IT assets, but the traditional assets, such as land building, facilities, equipment, and so on because most of them are tangible and not easy to duplicate or replicate. But software is not like that. We need a special set of requirements to accommodate these within the IT organization. The asset is not just about installing the software, but also the evidence which need to be produced to quantify and qualify the, uh, what software has been installed. This can include producing contracts, licensing keys, emails, dongles, purchase records, the licenses, processors, processor codes, or even HR records. Understanding this evidence in advance related to your software installs will keep you in good position when comparing the installs to the rights to use the software. This is where ISO 19770-1 ensures that the organization is fully conversant with all elements of software that could be used to identify and justify its purchase and installation in a company. The ISO standard offers guidance on what those elements might include, but ultimately it is up to the organization to find out and confirm what those assets are. Software characteristics that could influ influence license consumption are uh, the all installed software, the software versions, patches and updates and licenses. Also, it can include the proof of license documentation, such as purchase orders, invoices, original packaging, uh, original documentation, etc., licensing models, master versions and distribution copies of the software, metadata regarding the software as required by the ISO 197701, uh, like the unique identifiers, the name and description of the software, location of it, who is the owner, and what is the status of that? Is it used in development or a test environment or a production environment? This picture is interesting. We have at the rightmost side, we have an individual using their system, a PC or a laptop or a tablet to access some data which is within the Oracle database. However, they're using only an Excel front end, like a Microsoft Excel, which means they might have a license for Excel. However, they have to make sure that they have a license for the Oracle database access also. Therefore, software asset identification can get complicated. This is where the, this end user is using not only Excel, but also integrating with the data at the back end, which is in the Oracle database and which includes the Oracle database server and some other SQL software and its reporting services and the access to those through the Citrix uh, environment. This is all technical. However, uh, there needs to be caution so that there is no compromise on the licenses. Therefore, the SAM expert 
should be aware of the entitlement of using different technologies on different platforms and how this impacts the license usage. The architecture therefore also becomes important to understand as shown in this picture here.